Hey guys, welcome back to Fairwinds RV. My name is still Jeremy, and in this episode, we're gonna cover something that I have been talking about for a couple of months now in a few different episodes, and that is my EcoFlow Delta Pro portable power station. So for those of you who maybe have been thinking about putting in a solar option in your RV or possibly even in your house, I wanna introduce the portable power station to you because in my research, when I was looking into putting in a solar system into my RV, I ran across these things and they are super, super useful. There are so many options that are available using one of these portable power stations versus say a traditional solar setup that I really wanted to share this information with you guys because I've installed it in my rig and it has worked out great. So buckle up, we're gonna talk about some pretty cool stuff here. We're not gonna go too much into detail and get all nerdy about it, uh, but we are gonna cover the basics on this and we're gonna cover why I chose it and how how I've incorporated it into my RV. So let's not prolong this anymore and let's get right to it. All right, so first we're gonna cover just what is a portable power station, right? So basically a portable power station, if you think about those small battery packs that you might have that you use to charge things like cell phones or cameras or whatever your small electronic devices are that you need to keep charged while you're on the go, it's kind of like one of those, only it's a lot bigger. And not only can it provide power to charge all of your DC components, it can also provide 120 volt AC power to just about anything that you need, especially if you're talking about in an RV. All right, so portable power stations have been around for a while. I ran across them uh, a couple of months ago, and this is actually the first one I ran across, which is the EcoFlow Delta Pro. But there are other companies out there that also make these. And by the way, I have no affiliation with this company or any other company for any product we're going over here. Uh, this is just the one that I chose. But there are other companies out there such as Jackery and Blue Eddy that also make great products. Jackery is kind of, I don't know if they're really the pioneer of all of this, but they're the ones that really kind of, I think, kick this, this you know portable power station thing off and really got it uh, going. And then a few years ago, this company called EcoFlow started making some as well. And they've really started pushing the envelope on these things and what they can do. So I don't want to go into a lot of the background of these things, but what I do want to talk about is how handy these things are to have around. Now you can use these things to charge anything from your cell phone uh, all the way up to powering your entire RV. And if you really wanna go this far, you can actually set up an entire system to power your house and get completely off the grid. Now, I'm not gonna talk about that part about you know maybe connecting these up to a house, but just keep in mind that these things are scalable to go really as small as you want or you know as big as you know I think that you would really ever need. Because here's the thing, so this unit on the right here, this is the actual portable power station. I'm gonna discuss both of these, but this is the actual portable power station here. And this is a 3,600 watt unit. That's pretty big for something in such a small box. And this is kind of your basic EcoFlow Delta Pro series, which just happens to be basically their largest portable power station at 3,600 watts. They have several other portable power stations, um, but they're not nearly big enough to do what I needed them to do, which was power my entire RV. But like I said, they're completely scalable. You can add to these, you can add extra batteries uh, to these, and then you can take even two systems. You can take two systems with extra batteries, parallel them together with what they call their voltage doubler, and you can actually get 25,000 watts out of these systems. Now, I don't think that's really necessary if you're living in an RV. I know there are a lot of guys out there who have uh, these ginormous solar setups, you know, with 20 or 25,000 watts. For me, I don't don't think that's necessary and I'd put money on the fact that most of you guys aren't really looking to get that big either. So what I want to do is just talk about what I have, why I chose it, and then how I integrated it into my RV. And I'm even going to provide an animated drawing to kind of show you how I physically wired everything up. Okay, so like I said before, we're not going to get super in depth on any of the details on this or any of the specs, but I did want to go over the basic specifications for this and its limitations. So like I said, this is a 3600 watt 
unit. Okay, so it's got a 3600 watt inverter in it, but it's also got the equivalent of three 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries in it as well. And the thing that I really like about these portable power stations is if you take a look at everything you need for a traditional solar setup in your RV, so the inverter, the charge controller, you know, the battery monitoring system, all of the batteries themselves, all of that cabling that you would normally have to run to the batteries and so forth, everything is actually included in this nice compact little box. That's what I really love about it because that makes it portable. Okay, so why do I want it to be portable? A lot of you know we own a 42 foot fifth wheel and we are not able to get that fifth wheel into a lot of places that we wanna go. It's just too big. So down the road, what we're looking at is we wanna get a truck tent to put in our truck and then take that truck tent and really get to some of these remote areas that we just can't get to with our fifth wheel. This is going to allow us to do that in a little bit more comfort, I think. So basically, and, and I'll show you this in just a little bit, how I've got this connected to my RV, but basically the RV is just plugged into this thing through a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter, and it just plugs right into this sucker. And anytime we wanna take this out, I can just unplug it, pull it out of my RV, and take it with me wherever I want to go. The second reason I really like the portability of this is because eventually we're going to want to upgrade our fifth wheel into probably a toy hauler. And when it comes to that point, I didn't want to have to make that decision of what do I do with all that solar equipment that I installed in this thing, right? Because it's probably not going to increase the value much on my RV. It might increase the uh, marketability of it or how easily I can sell it, but I'm probably never going to get my money back out of it. And with this system here, all I got to do is just unplug it and take it with me. There's a little bit of, of wiring that I'll have to fix inside of the RV, but that is relatively simple. Uh, maybe take an hour or two to get done and then I'm done with it. I don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not I want to uninstall a whole bunch of other components and put them in my new RV. I just didn't want to have to make that decision. All right, so back to the specifications on this, like I said, 3600 watts. Okay, so it's got the normal 30 amp connection on here. So for those of you who may only have a 30 amp RV, that's, you know, that's really easy for you. You just plug right into this thing. For those of you who have a 50 amp RV, obviously you'll need that 50 amp to 30 amp adapter, and you're not going to get as much power as you normally would have. But you know, when we take this thing, when we're boondocking, we don't like to go boondocking anywhere where we're gonna need air conditioning. Uh, that's just too much of a hassle. I don't have a big enough solar setup for that. I don't want that big of a solar setup. So when we go bo boondocking, we are going somewhere where we don't need AC. And let me tell you, this thing will handle anything you can throw at it. It will actually handle your AC. You just gotta keep in mind, it's battery powered and you can charge it from solar, which we're gonna talk about here in just a little bit. But you gotta remember this is, you know, powered by a battery and those batteries are eventually gonna drain. But I'll get more into that here in just a little bit. All right, also you can see it's got four standard 120 volt, 20 amp outlets on it. So you can plug in all of your electrical things that you need. Like I said, you can throw just about anything at this that you want. In addition, it's got six total USB ports, including two USB-C 100 watt ports for you know charging your cell phones more quickly or it's got just two regular fast charging USB ports here so you can if it's USB powered you can charge it with this thing no problems all right so this thing's got just a slew of other ports where you can send power to just about like I said before just about anything you can imagine uh, you can power it up with this thing uh, I'm not going to go into detail on those you know maybe I'll throw some stuff up on the screen here just to kind of point them out but I'll, t I'll be honest with you. Uh, some of that stuff I have absolutely zero need for. Uh, I'm guessing uh, a lot of you, maybe even most of you probably aren't going to have any need for it. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over something that nobody's super interested in. Okay. So like I said before, this unit is normally rated at 3,600 Watts. That's kind of its normal operating limit. However, this thing comes with this really cool feature. It's called an X boost. And basically what this X boost does is it's going to increase your maximum limit up to 4,500 watts. That is a lot of power coming out of that little box. So enough on the X Boost. It's there. Um, you know, do your own research on that about when it would and wouldn't be appropriate to use. But I want to move on to some other things here. First, 
I will admit that these things are heavy. This unit on the right, which is the 300 amp hour battery, uh, the inverter, the charge controller, all of that good stuff. This one weighs just shy of 100 pounds, right? And then this unit on the left, uh, I bought this a couple months ago. It's just simply an extra battery pack. Basically, it's another 300 amp hours of lithium ion battery power. So what does that mean for me? That means that instead of having just the 3600 watt hour capacity that this would normally have with just the power station i've now doubled that to 7200 watt hours of power now don't get that confused with how many watts it can supply at any one time if we just go back to the normal operating limit of this thing it's still 3600 watts of power that it can put out that's it unless you use that x boost feature so let's just assume you're using the full 3600 watts here that means that this unit right here alone can supply that 3600 watts for for exactly one hour. Now by adding this extra battery on here, I've just doubled my overall capacity. So now I can supply that 3,600 watts for two hours, which would be a total of 7,200 watt hours. Okay, so let's get back to the weight of this thing. So like I said, it is pretty heavy and it's because it's got the batteries, it's got everything you need in here. But the thing I wanna point out here is, is both of these units, right, come with this little suitcase style roller handle where you just pull it out and then you can roll this thing along the ground just like you would um, a suitcase. So they both have one, just, you know, you just push the button in, pull it out, boom, you're done. And, you know, 100 pounds here is really nothing. Uh, once you get this thing up on the roller, it rolls around really nice. Okay, I'm not gonna go into uh, much else on the specs or the details of this thing because what I really wanna get into and what I wanna show you guys is how I'm using this thing in my RV. Okay, so before we take a look at the physical setup inside of my pass-through, inside of my RV, um, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes here and show you an illustration of how I have made all these connections to integrate this EcoFlow portable power station into my RV's electrical distribution system. So basically what we're looking at here is simply two separate sources of power, meaning we have shore power on one side and then we have the EcoFlow portable power station on the other side. And both of those feed separately into this manual transfer switch. And then I use this manual transfer switch to switch between shore power and the EcoFlow portable power station to provide one single output to my main breaker panel. Now keep in mind here, this diagram depicts connecting into a 50 amp rig where you have two separate hot leads coming in that feed two separate circuits within your RV. Now, if you have a 30 amp rig, you have a single hot leg that comes in that feeds a single circuit within your RV. So that means the all of the red and black lines that you see here, you are only gonna have one of these lines that carries all of the power from your source to your breaker panel. And again, that makes this a little bit easier because because you can just simply plug straight into the EcoFlow through this standard 30 amp RV connection. Now, those of us with a 50 amp RV will still need this 50 amp to 30 amp adapter to plug into. Okay, so for bringing the shore power into my manual transfer switch and then passing that on to the main breaker panel, what I had to do there was I had to remove the main shore power cable that comes into the rig from the back of the main breaker panel and then reroute that cable into one of the line sides of this manual transfer switch. And then I had to route separate lines back to the main breaker panel into the breakers that were previously fed straight from shore power. Now, what I did for my portable power station here is I simply purchased another 50 amp RV cable and I cut one end of that cable off. I then fed the two hot leads from that cable into the second line side connection of my manual transfer switch. Once I had those hot leg connections into the manual transfer switch, I then simply took the ground and the return line connections and I tied those into the return and ground line connections for shore power. So now basically what I have here is say, if I'm in position one, then I have power coming in through my hot legs from shore power into my manual transfer switch, and then from the manual transfer switch, straight into the main breaker panel. And then if I lose shore power, I can transfer power over to my portable power station simply by manipulating the switch from position one over to position two, which then allows power to flow 
from my EcoFlow portable power station through the adapter, through the manual transfer switch, and then again into my main breaker panel. And then up here, obviously, I just have a couple of solar panels just to show how easy this is to hook into the backside of the EcoFlow portable power station. It really is this simple. And then finally, this is just a standard 120 volt connection so that I can plug my unit into an outlet when I'm connected to the grid to get my batteries topped off. All right, guys, so this is where the magic happens. No, not that kind of magic. Get your mind out of the gutter. But this is where I've got my power station set up in my RV. It's just in the pass-through on the driver's side, and it's a really convenient location for me to be able to get it in and out with ease. And it was also a very good location to bring down the solar cable from the roof. Now I know that I haven't talked a lot about the solar panels because that really wasn't the point of this video. I really wanted to talk about the power station itself. The solar panels are just kind of solar panels. If you're looking at any type of solar system for your RV, uh, there are just a ton of solar panels out there for you to choose from. These portable power stations, at least the EcoFlows, you can really use any type of solar panel that you want as long as it meets the specifications of the power station itself. So no matter what brand you buy, no matter you know what size of solar panel you buy, as long as it falls within those specifications, you can use it with this power station. And of course, it also has to have the right type of connection to go into the back of the station itself. So that's why I didn't spend a lot of time on the solar panels. It just really wasn't the point of the video. But just to let you know what I have, I have one 370 watt V-Sun solar panel permanently mounted to the roof. And then I have two portable solar panels, uh, 400 watts each that are made by EcoFlow. Those are really nice because again, I can take them wherever I want to take them. I can put them up on the roof if I want to. I can set them out here. Uh, I can face them towards the sun. I can put them on either side of the RV. It really just depends on my location and how my RV is sitting at the time and I can do whatever I need to do with those solar panels. All right, so as you can see in here, I've got the two units side by side and I've just kind of kept the bases that they shipped in to prevent a lot of moving around, you know, when we're driving down the road and they've really done a good job after a long day of driving on the terrible roads in this country. When we finally pull into our destination and we open this up, these things haven't moved an inch. So I've been really happy with these bases that they shipped in. They're just like styrofoam or whatever, but they're they're really, uh, they really grab the floor in here. Plus these things are heavy, so they don't really move around a lot when we're going down the road. And then as you can see, I have my manual transfer switch in here. Uh, again, that's a pretty easy operation. One good tip here on the operation of this manual transfer switch is you always want to try and minimize or zero really, preferably, your load on the system before you transfer the switch to the alternate or back to its normal power supply. So the easiest way to do that is to open the main circuit breakers at the circuit breaker panel in the RV. That way, you know, you don't have any load. Uh, there's no current going through that switch when you switch it over. Technically, you don't need to, but over time, that's going to prolong the life of that manual transfer switch. So there's really not a lot to look at down here. Um, you know, I talked about all the specifications, you know, how I use this thing. We went through the diagram of how I have connected this thing to my system, but there is one thing that I want to mention and show you here, and that's this ground and neutral bonding plug that I bought from Hughes. It's the same company that makes the surge protector slash EPO that we use, the power watchdog. And the reason that I have this is because this portable power station, and I think most portable power stations, if not all of them, are actually ungrounded systems. And again, I'm not going to get super deep into the theory on that, but you always want to make sure that you have a grounded system because that's what's going to protect you if there's a fault in the wiring or a ground fault in the wiring inside of your RV. So you always want to make sure that you have a grounded system to make sure you get that protection. So in a system like this, uh, and in many generators that are not grounded systems, the easiest fix is one of these ground and neutral bonding plugs. And these are super, super simple to use. All you really need to do is just plug this thing into one of the standard 120 volt outlets in here. And what it does is it bonds that ground to neutral circuit within that machine. That way, if there is a fault inside of your RV, then that fault current 
has a path back to its source. And again, I'm not gonna go any deeper than that uh, with the electrical theory part of this, but just understand that a ground and neutral bonding plug, if you're using this system by itself, is necessary. Now, there's a catch to this, right? As you guys know right now, I'm plugged into a 50 amp outlet in my parents' house that I installed. And if you remember back to the diagram that we just went through, I've actually tied this portable power station into the ground and neutral lines that run to the grid. So basically what I have is I have the hots running through the switch. And again, I have connected that ground and neutral lines to the grid. So to make a long story short here, if this is the case, then you actually do not want to use the ground to neutral bonding plug. I know that's probably clear as mud. So here are the key points. If you're using this portable power station all by itself, i.e. if you are out boondocking, and you are not connected to any other source of power whatsoever, then you would wanna use one of these ground to neutral bonding plugs to make sure you have that protection against the ground fault. However, if you are connected to the grid and you have it wired up as I showed in my demonstration, you wouldn't need nor would you want to use this ground to neutral bonding plug. All right, so the last thing we need to talk about here is how you control this system. There's really only three things you can do using the front panel of the portable power station itself. So number one, you can monitor how much power you're using at any given time, and you can see how much battery power you have left. Number two, you are able to turn all of the AC outlets on and off using a push button on the front. And then the only other thing you can do with this system from the front panel is to just turn the entire system on and off. Every other aspect of control for this EcoFlow unit is done through the EcoFlow app. And I'll tell you, they've done a really good job with this app here. You can control a lot of different aspects of this machine, including your charge rate. Um, you can set the percentage that you wanna to charge to or just discharge to, meaning if you only want to discharge this thing down to 20%, you can set that as your lower limit. And if you only wanna charge it to 80%, you can set that as the upper limit. So I'm not gonna go into Everything that you can control here, just be aware that 95% of what you need to control is gonna be done through the app. The only downside I've found to this app is that it can be difficult to get it connected to your Wi-Fi. When I first got this system, it probably took me a good half hour to get it connected to the Wi-Fi. I didn't have to do anything fancy or tricky to do it. I just had to keep going through the motions in order for it to recognize and connect to my Wi-Fi. Once I did that, I was able to upgrade the firmware on the system itself, and then I haven't had any troubles getting connected since then. All right, my dude, so I think that's going to wrap this up for this episode. Uh, please, if you have any questions or if you have any ideas about how to make this setup better or if you have any experience with these systems, please make sure you share those in the comments below. I'd really like to know how you guys are using these systems if you have one, uh, how you may have them hooked up to your rig or even if you've got them connected up to your house. I'm sure there are just a ton of different ways to do this. Like I said before, it's very customizable. Uh, it's very scalable and there are a lot of different ways you can do this. So please make sure you leave those comments below so that not only I can see them, but so other people can learn from what you guys have done out there as well. And then one last plug here is please make sure if you like this video to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It's free to you and it really helps us out a lot. So until the next video, peace out and be safe out there guys.